Hello and welcome to another episode of the Leo Alves podcast and in today's podcast episode I'm going to go over another Q&A with you because I am really enjoying the Q&As right now and I just figure you know for as long as I'm enjoying making these Q&As I'm just going to continue with them because if I'm enjoying them then I feel like the quality of the content is going to be higher for you and therefore you're going to take away a lot more from it so it makes a lot of sense. Otherwise Enough about that. I'm going to get stuck into the first question of today and I'm going to go through these questions in no particular order. I've got about five in front of me. So first question, what are some common misconceptions or myths about fitness and exercise that you frequently come across and what are the truths behind them? Okay, so there are like tons that I come across and I want to make that clear. First of all, doing what I do as an online coach slash I was a personal trainer on the gym floor for quite a few years and I've done many internships as well so in my time best believe I've come across across many many common misconceptions and fitness myths I'm going to speak about one of the more recent ones I've come across which is and don't get me wrong this might be something that you believe in right now or you know someone that believes in this so you know there's obviously the typical like weight gain or bulk phase and then people want to then lose the weight and cut down and Generally speaking, a lot of people believe, potentially yourself included, that when you're trying to gain weight and you're pushing your weight up and you're bulking, that you train with low reps and heavy weight. And then when you want to cut down, you want to start switching to lighter weights, higher reps, and like more circuit-based training. That's a complete myth. That is not true. And not only am I an example of this, where I did a bulk and cut between like 2018 to 2019 no 2018 to like yeah 2019 it was over a year it was probably about a year and a half and I'm just I'm going to tell you about my own experience here but you know this is the experience of many of many people this has been proven time and time again now that you want to train in the exact same way so first of all you want to be doing both rep ranges you want to be doing heavyweight you want to be doing lightweight you want to be doing high rep ranges you want to be doing lower rep ranges you want to be doing both in your workout plans at all time of the calendar year, like throughout the year, whether you're in a bulk, whether you're on a cut, you want to be doing both. Because if you're just focusing on one the entire time, your muscles are going to get used to it quicker and therefore you're likely going to experience a plateau quicker. But if you're, you know, mixing up your rep ranges and therefore, obviously if you're doing high rep ranges, then you are going to have to lift relatively lighter. Although saying that you should still take all of your sets, whether it's high reps or low reps, close to failure and that's where the key is coming in so all of them should be taken close to failure anyway potentially failure on some sets if not at least one or two reps shy from failure and i think that's what people don't really understand because at the end of the day whether you're doing high reps or low reps and therefore maybe lighter weight or heavier weight like it it still needs to be taken close to failure anyway because when people cut down and they achieve that toned look that they're after so they've got like low body fat percentage, muscle gain peeping through it, like the muscle gain is is clear. That's because of the resistance training, the consistency with it, the progressive overload, the sets that were taken close to failure throughout the entire time. You don't lose weight from doing high reps and lighter weight. Like it's hard to totally explain because like this is just a complete myth. Like nutrition is going to dictate. So how to achieve the toned look? Let's speak about that because I think that's what we need to clear up first. The tone look comes from having muscle mass that you've built and a low body fat percentage, low enough to reveal the muscle that you've built. So how do you lose body fat? You lose it through your nutrition, being in a calorie deficit and keeping your protein high, prioritizing nutritious foods as well. And that's how you achieve the toned look, put very simply. So where does the high reps slash lightweight come in slash circuit training. People think that you need to start doing circuit training as well. I've heard this one as well because you that's what you need to do if you want to achieve the athletic look. I've got nothing else to say aside from that's a complete myth as well. Like how do you even debunk something that just makes no sense? The athletic look that people have in mind, again, that toned look, again, is from muscle mass and low body fat percentage. The muscle mass, so the body fat percentage I've already covered, the muscle mass is going to come from getting stronger, from progressively overloading, from doing a variety of rep ranges in your workouts, doing a variety of exercises from different angles, whether it's like a vertical pour, a horizontal pour, a lunge, a deadlift, a squat, chest presses, etc., etc., covering the entire body, not missing out muscle groups. And that's how you get a complete look. And obviously be consistent with that over a, a solid period of time, one year, one year and a half, two years, you know, the longer, the better. 
And that's eventually how you achieve the desired toned look, not from doing higher reps. And then I, I don't even know where that myth came from, but I've heard it so many times now, and I'll be honest, I'm surprised it's still going strong because again, it's just not true. Anyway, I feel like I, I went on quite a tangent there. So next question, what are some effective strategies for overcoming workout plateaus? And am I saying that word correctly? I feel like I am. And reviving progress when it feels like fitness gains have stored. Very good question. And the reason why I want to cover this one as well is because I feel like everyone, yourself included, myself included, is going to experience a plateau at some point for as long as you go for, to the gym long enough. Like if you've gone for the gym for... Maybe not six months because I feel like newbie gains are still going strong at the six month mark. But if you've been for like at least a year, a year and a half, then you've probably experienced the plateau at some point, maybe a year and a half, especially. And, you know, this is assuming that you're following a good, let's, let's assume that you're following like a, a well-structured workout program. If you're not and you're experiencing a plateau, then that's why. If you're just doing gym classes, then you need to get yourself an actual well-structured program because Gym classes can only take you so far, but let's assume that you are following a well-structured program. It's been a year, a year and a half. In that case, I would say it's time to maybe change up the exercises that you're doing. If there are exercises that you find you're often doing, let's say you often do a barbell squat, you often do a Romanian deadlift, and you often do forward lunges. And that's what you've been doing for a long time. It could potentially be a good idea to start doing instead of reverse lunges, goblet squats with a dumbbell, and conventional deadlifts instead instead and you will find that you see so you're not completely rewrite re re rewrite rewriting or recreating the the will what's that saying i don't know but you know what i'm i'm trying to say so you're you're not redesigning the will you're just going for things that are just slightly different to what you usually do or you could even do instead of like a a reverse lunge you could do like a, a lateral lunge you could do a sumo deadlift you know, there's just so many, it's just go for different, slightly different variations of the movement pattern that you're after. And that could be a very good idea to overcome plateaus as well. Another brilliant suggestion could be, and this kind of links back to the first question or the first answer I gave in this podcast episode is, if you are used to training in a specific rep range, let's say you're in your workouts, maybe for the first year, you were always doing like six to 10, six to 10, six to 10 rep range for literally every single exercise you would likely do very well to switch up the rep range. Maybe start doing 10 to 12, 10 to 12, or 12 to 15, 12 to 15. Ideally, the more of a variety of rep ranges you have in your workout plan, the better after a certain point, I would say. So that could be something to consider as well. So just go for slightly different variations of the same lunge, hip hinge, squat, etc., and uh, maybe aim for different rep ranges. Uh, so yeah, I feel like I've covered both maybe in case you were not following a structured workout program. And again, if that's not if that's not what you're doing right now, then that needs to come before anything. You need to get yourself a structured workout program. If you don't know where to grab one from, then straight away, you can grab the free full body workout plan from my website, which I'll link in the show notes of this podcast episode. Or better yet, you could become a Curious Online member and work with me online one-to-one -one, where I will make your workout plans for you, tailored to you, tailored to your needs. If you have an injury history, I can work out around that, depending on the equipment that you have access to at your gym as well. So you would just fill out a form and you take off the bits of equipment that you can use at your gym. And you know, I'll, I'll take all of that into consideration and I'll make your own workout plan for you as well but again i feel like gym classes are like really good just to maybe get your foot into the door in the gym and maybe get comfortable at the gym and maybe meet some new people but again they can only take you so far and it's the truth and now on to the next question which is how can individuals effectively manage and prioritize their time to fit in regular exercise especially when juggling work family and personal commitments and this is a very good question as well because we all go through this at some point in our life Unless, you know, the gym is what you do 24-7 and it's what you eat, breathe and sleep. But 99% of the world, that's just not us, okay? So, how to manage this? First of all, I do want to make it clear that there are going to be periods and seasons in your life where you're perhaps going to be less consistent than you would like with your resistance training, whether it is or isn't in your control. And that's okay, okay? I want you to understand that first of all. Now, it brings me on to the next point where... Now we have to do with what we have, like what we can. And I feel like a really good tip is planning in advance. Of course, there's like 101 things I could say about this, 
but I feel like a big one is planning in advance. A lot of people who struggle with fitting in workouts, this is just going from my experience. Again, this may or may not necessarily be you, but a lot of people just, they don't plan in advance. They take their workouts on the fly. They go through each day and they tell themselves, maybe I'm going to work out today. Maybe I'm going to work out today. Or maybe I'll go to the gym later. I'll go to the gym later. And then the day finishes and they didn't work out and they just tell themselves, oh, I'll go tomorrow instead. And then they repeat the cycle again tomorrow and after tomorrow. And then before they know it, the entire week has gone by and they didn't do a workout. So what you need to do moving forward, this could, so this is just something to consider is plan your workouts in at the start of the week so if at the start of the week or let's say let's say the, the week starts on a monday i know some people like to say it starts on a sunday i say it starts on a monday so week starts on a monday that means on the sunday so the day before the week starts look at the week that you have ahead of you and see where you can fit a workout in first of all it's important to also understand that your workout doesn't necessarily have to be an hour long like a workout can be 20 minutes long 30 minutes long if that's what you have time for that's okay so on the Sunday, see where you have time at the beginning of the week, uh, throughout the week, I should say, to do maybe two or three half an hour workouts, do full body workouts, and that'll be more than enough to make very, very good progress. So maybe you look at the week ahead of you and you see, okay, I've got free time on Tuesday morning, Thursday afternoon, and that's it. So that means you then put that in your calendar. You block out that space in your calendar for Tuesday morning and Thursday afternoon. So that means that if you've blocked it out in your calendar, nothing can spontaneously pop up and overtake it. You've dedicated that time to your workouts. And now it's going to be a lot harder for something else to take its place because when you don't block out that time, it's very easy just for spontaneous events to pop up. And then you're like, oh yeah, I've got that time free. I've got an hour free right now. Yeah, well, why not? Let's just uh, let's just do something else. Do you know what I mean? So again, chances are if you are struggling with timekeeping and you are juggling work, family and personal commitments, then yeah, you're just going to have to be very on the ball with your your timing. At, like, And by doing that, you're going to, and to do that, I should say, you're going to have to plan these days in advance. Again, you can't be taking workouts on the fly, which is a common mistake I often encounter. Again, that may or may not be you, but that is a popular one I do see. And with that adjustment, it, it does help. And now onto the next question, which is what are some safe and effective methods for gradually increasing workout intensity? Okay, so this is a very good question as well, because it's something that everyone needs to be aware about. And the first thing that comes to mind instantly, and this is something that's very, very important to know, and it's something I, it's a concept I did not understand for the first few years of my resistance training. And I only have myself to blame because I didn't ever reach out to anyone else to help me. I didn't understand the concept of progressive overload, which is what I'm going to speak about. Maybe you know what progressive overload is. If so, great. If not, and you're about to learn something that's going to completely change the trajectory of the progress that you're about to make when it comes to exercise. So what is progressive overload? It's just a very good way to progress and make exercises more challenging. And relatively speaking, like because as these get progressively harder, your body adapts. So that means that you're getting positive adaptations from it. So you're getting stronger, you're getting fitter, and that means you can keep up to then continue making adaptations and improvements then you have to keep making it even more challenging let me explain this in more depth because you're thinking you're probably thinking like what, what's he talking about so let's say you're doing a dumbbell row and you do 14 kg with the dumbbell row and you get eight reps and maybe the rep range you're aiming for is like six to eight so that means you've maxed out the rep range that also means that the next time you do the dumbbell rows you can go to the next increment up because you already maxed out the rep range you know assuming that form was good of course that means you could try the 16 kgs and then aim for that rep range again and then maybe on the 16 kgs you get six reps and because the aim was six to eight maybe next time you can try 16 again but then aim for like seven or eight reps so you'd be trying to get slightly more reps and then you would repeat the cycle until like you max out the rep range again and then you would go to the next increment up again so if you max out the rep range of the 16 kgs you get eight reps you would then grab the 18 kgs so progressive overload can come in the form of adding more weight adding more reps, manipulating timings for exercises that allow it, such as planks, or controlling an exercise better, which is something a lot of people overlook as well. So let's say, and by that I mean, let's say maybe you were doing a deadlift with 20 kg one week and 
maybe your control wasn't so good, you didn't feel very stable, you were shaking a lot as you were performing the exercise, maybe you were going quite up and down very fast, but then the next week you notice you're a lot less shaky, you feel like you have way more control over it, and you're moving through the exercise slowly, even though you're doing the same rep, um, the same amount of weight, that is progressive overload because of the increased control that you now have over the exercise. So, this is what I want you to bear in mind moving forward. You need to ensure that you are implementing progressive overload within your workout sessions over the long term. Now, on that note, I do want to say that not every single set for every single exercise for every single workout is going to progressively overload for the rest of your life. Because, you know, there's just curveballs that are going to be thrown. And for example, I always do try and go into my sessions with the intention of progressive overload. And I will say the majority of the time it does happen, but there are just some sessions where it just doesn't happen for whatever reason. Like I said the other day, one of my workouts I had, it just completely sucked. It didn't go well. I didn't enjoy it. Everything felt hard. It it felt weak. And in fact, nothing progressively overloaded that day, but I was still happy that I went and I got the workout done. Sometimes those things happen. It is what it is. But what I am saying is at least for the majority of the time, like in the grand scheme of things, as long as you are progressively overloading for time on average and weight is going up and reps are going up, and you know your control is good and you're manipulating times where you can, that's what you need to ensure is happening because without progressive overload, how can your positive adaptations be happening? How can you gain muscle? How can you get stronger? You can't because you know if you're always lifting 14 kg, nothing's gonna come on the back of that. You're always just lifting the same weight. You can't improve if you're always doing the same thing. So you have to make your workouts progressively more challenging. So do bear that in mind moving forward. Anyway, on to the final question. And wait, before I move on to the final question, and I know I already said this, but I do really want to emphasize it. Progressive overload can only be implemented when form is good. Don't progressively overload rubbish form, okay? That's just something I want to leave you with because I don't want you to injure yourself as well. And now on to the final question. Can you share some personal experiences or stories from your own fitness journey? including any challenges you faced and how you overcame them? Wow, this is a good question. And to be honest, so many things come to mind because just like you, I made so many mistakes when I first started my fitness journey. You know, I was a teenager when I first started out. And of course, you can minimize the amount of mistakes you made by hiring a fitness professional to guide you, assuming they're good, of course. But, you know, again, I was a teenager. I was broke. I couldn't afford professional guidance. So I kind of had to just make do with the resources online, which wasn't anywhere as good as it is now i'm speaking like 10 years ago now i feel like there's an abundance of information and it's really high quality depending on if you know where to look Uh, but back then like there was resources still it was still good but it wasn't anywhere near as much now and it wasn't as quality as it is now but yeah again i just was learning where i could from who i could and and obviously i don't feel like i did the like it was hard to like filter good and bad information as well at the time because I had no one to do that for me I was just kind of learning as I went but I feel like yeah the the biggest struggle I had was I feel like one I mentioned already in this podcast episode where I just did not understand the uh, concept of progressive overload for such a long time and looking back I, I don't know how no one explained this to me I don't know how I I've, I never like came across this online or in an article or in a youtube video or maybe i did and it just went over my head but yeah for like three four years straight i was just lifting the same weights at the gym and maybe i would go up one and then i would go down one and then i would go up one and i would kind of just pick up pick like the weight that felt like i could do at the time and i would never yeah just the concept of progressive overload it wasn't something i understood and therefore didn't apply and for a long time i'd made no progress and i do remember that got quite frustrating after a while because i was thinking damn you know i'm so damn consistent at the gym but i'm just not making any progress i know for a fact i'm obviously doing something wrong and that did take me a while to obviously reach as i said i was like making no progress for three years and that took me three years to realize Uh, speaking about muscle and strength gain specifically when I say I made no progress there because for weight loss I did make a lot of good progress but uh, yeah when it came to muscle and strength gain just for a long time I could see I was going around in circles with it and then I would look like towards some of my friends who were less consistent with than me and maybe they'd been growing less time and I could already see they made more progress and I was like yeah I'm definitely doing something wrong because I'm literally going to the gym like four times a week and I'm just not doing it and hence why I reached out to my first coach eventually when I could afford it and then he basically 
explain the concept of progressive overload. And this is why, you know, a coach can be so valuable to have as well, not necessarily because they have to, like they tell you about what progressive overload is or something like that, but just having that experience guidance by your side, ready to explain things weekly and just, you know, help you out when needed, making, you know, tailored workout programs, making nutritional suggestions, especially for someone who's maybe never done a correct fitness journey themselves before and doesn't really know what to do and they feel like they've been going around in circles a long time potentially you included this was definitely an old me yeah like reaching out to a coach and hiring them eventually was just priceless for my progress and it was definitely an investment in myself and one i've made in the long term and i I stayed with that coach for two years and yeah I, i made good progress and physically and i i learned a lot so yeah i feel like that is probably the biggest challenge one of the obviously i've faced so many challenges but that was a big one just mentally it was it was it was frustrating it was very frustrating for me at the time just going around in circles even though i was just so consistent with the gym anyway i'm going to leave it at that for today thank you so much for listening if there's anything you want to speak about on the back of this remember always reach out to me you can always reach out to me don't ever be worried or intimidated in any way my dms my inbox they're always open Otherwise, take care and have a lovely day. I'll see you in the next episode. That wraps it up for another episode of the Leo Alves podcast. I do hope you enjoyed listening to this episode. If you did, then please do consider sharing it with your friends, family, group chat, or even anyone else who you know could be interested in listening to that episode. Otherwise, if you haven't already, then please do leave a five-star review on whichever platform you are listening to this on. And remember, all the relevant links, such as the inquiry form to potentially become a Keros Online member, my social media handles, a free fat loss guide, and a free workout plan are all also found in the show notes of this podcast episode as well. Otherwise, take care and I'll see you around.